Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I have a little bit of free time and I'm playing around with a PTO clutch from a tractor. You can see it's pretty old and it looks like this tractor was left out in the rain. But um, anyhow, this thing spins, but it's not engaging. And I figured we'd do a little autopsy and just see if we can get this thing going. So I'm first going to show you what this thing does. I'll plug in my power supply. And this is my power supply. It's an old Dodge Ram radio. And I've taken some 3.3, 5, and 12 volt DC. So once that's plugged in, I have power. Now, this clutch here works. So let me put you in a stand. I'll show you what it looks like. So we'll just take our leads. One on each side. And what you have is an electromagnet that's pulling in and closing the clutch and you hear you know a nice solid connection now here's the one that we're going to work on just hook this up and we're getting nothing so that's why we're going to open it up and check it out so I just want to check that this thing is uh, electronically correct. So I'll put it on uh, ohms here. And usually a, a good clutch is somewhere less than like four ohms, maybe three and a half. You can actually look up the rating with the manufacturer. They should list it. So if you have like a, a PTO switch that keeps going bad, um, it could be because the resistance in your clutch is so high that it's causing that switch to heat up and actually melt. So whenever you do a PTO switch, you always want to check the resistance in the clutch. And this one is 2.6. So that should be good. Electrically, everything's going through here. So I'm thinking that mechanically this thing, something's probably seized up or rusted in place. So that's why we're going to open it up and just see if we see anything. That's how we learn. So I can tell these bolts are pretty rusted, so I'm going to shock them a little bit before I try and take them off. And in here, this is just a PB blaster. I'll hit all three. Can't hurt. And I'm going to make like a mini anvil. So I'll put that socket under there. And this socket is actually smaller than the bolt. So I'm going to hit that and see if that uh, helps. If I can hold on to it. Let's see if that loosens up. One for one. Now I'll try this one without shocking it, see if it comes. Two for two. Alright, so we got lucky with those. Pop this apart. And if we look in here, you can see that this thing is really rusted and really dirty. Um, I'll give you a closer look at everything because these should look these surfaces should look really clean There's a ton of rust in here. I don't know how well you can see it Probably even looks a little cleaner in the light. So I'm thinking that the uh, Electric magnets probably working But maybe the the parts are actually seized. So they're not moving or pulling in so uh, what the goal is here is to try and get these little hinge mechanisms moving. We'll try and uh, pull this apart and just kind of clean it and see what happens. Alright, so I put it up here on my anvil and that's just so I can hammer on it. We'll tap on it and we'll try and knock some of this loose. A little bit of PV blaster on the whole thing. We're not going to hurt anything so we'll be generous. And it's just going to be a matter of shocking things. Just get them budging a little bit. Not exactly sure how this thing 
works, but I think these levers should be able to pivot, but it doesn't look like they are able to. Um, maybe I'll try and clamp this in a vise, and we'll tap on it and see if we can't get it to move. So I got the main case kind of clamped, and I'm just trying to get in here, and we just want to get it moving. Don't know if that's working or not. I don't know if that even budged. For all I know, this side's not supposed to move. I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe it doesn't move left to right. Maybe it moves like north south instead of east to west. Yeah, I think that is supposed to pull out a little bit. See how that's moving? So if we just pry on this, that should loosen up the rust, I would think. There we go. All right, well that moved a little bit. So I think now I'm just gonna wire brush this and kind of clean it up. So here's the other side. I got these three springs, pop them off and I feel like this piece should pop off here. I think I'll clamp it in a vise and we'll try and knock it off because I feel like I've had other clutches that have come apart when I was working on them. But you can see there's a ton of dirt in here. It's really built up. So uh, I'd like to pop that off and just clean that out. And I believe this side is the side that has the electromagnet because this is the side that plugs in. So this is probably our problem probably not that other end so now I got this one clamped and we'll see if we can pry and pop this apart doesn't look like it wants to come apart Guess we'll tap on it a little and see if it wants to loosen up. A lot of dirt falling out of it. Well, I'll be. That thing just popped right off. There's a little ring on the back. So that goes on the back. So I think what we'll do is try and clean up these parts. Kind of inspect them and see what we got. So we'll just clean this up a little. I could pull this bearing cover and repack the grease but I don't think I'm gonna do that until I know that the thing works so this is the magnet here I guess and there's some sort of coil that goes around it so I think I'll just clean up this outside edge best I can on my uh, wire wheel alright so I cleaned everything up got about 20 minutes in this so this turned out pretty good. So that drops in there. There's a ring that goes on the back. There's that. And then we'll flip that over.
I think this one goes like that. There we go. Three springs. Now I should have looked at how deep these bolts were on here. Because sometimes you have this gap gets too wide here and then the PTO won't engage so it has all the electrical current magnets working and all that but it's not pulling in enough to engage so you can adjust these to get it to pull in but before you do that you want to check your resistance ohm that out and make sure that's good So what you do is you put a, a feeler gauge in there I don't think I have this thing together right I think this thing goes on the inside the other way hang on So, this goes in here this way. So, what we'll do is we'll uh, snug these up where I thought they were, and then if the thing is working, I'll get the spec and I'll set it. But I gotta look up the spec, see how many thousands. That eh, should be good for testing. All right, so we'll see what we got. There you go. So just a little uh, cleaning on that thing. Looks like it goes a long way. Just make sure that's locking. Yeah. I'll show you what the what it what it's actually doing. Hang on. All right, guys. So I put a flashlight under here. You see that keyway? When this thing turns, the keyway is locked to the pulley. So I'm going to now take the power off and plug one of these wires. There we go. And now the pulley spins freely. So the crankshaft will be turning that keyway and this pulley will just sit on the belt. And when you engage the PTO, they lock together like I just showed you. One other thing I wanted to point out, you can check the resistance like I showed you. And then another thing you can check is that the uh, magnet actually works. So, uh, I'll just show you on this one. This, uh, pop this one apart. And if you remember, I was like cleaning everything under here, just making sure all the parts are moving and trying to remove some rust. See, yeah, this is this is your electromagnet. And let me hook this up. When we hook when we hook this up, we're gonna have. Uh, we should have an electromagnet. So right here, just have a screwdriver, and you can see that sticks to it, so the magnet's working. And the strength of the magnet 
Looks like with the screwdriver you should just about barely be able to pick it up. See how it's just falling off? That side's sort of falling off. So it's a pretty good magnet. And you know, if you have good resistance and this magnet's not even sticking, then it's never gonna work. So that's probably something that you want to check when you're troubleshooting. Alright guys, so uh, that's how you take apart your PTO. I thought this video, well number one, I was just doing it for fun for me. And uh, I think it could be pretty helpful for someone. You know, if your PTO is not working and you troubleshoot it and you know it's not the switch or the wiring or anything like that. Um, you know, take it apart and see if you can find a problem. A lot of times with PTOs, it's just a... Uh, a wire that gets pulled out because they don't have the PTO locked in right. So make sure when you put your PTO back in your uh, engine that you lock it in. Like if you look at this, this plate right here, that's got to lock on to something to keep it from spinning when it's uh, on the tractor. So anyhow, I'm Double Wide Six. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll link some of the tools I use down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one.